Welcome to today's webinar, Optimizing Email, Tesla Met Methods to Increase Conversions. Today you'll learn how to improve your email conversion rates. Um, a few housekeeping items before we get started. There's no need to take notes. This presentation deck will be available to you after the webinar. Questions and comments can be asked in real time by using the questions pane and there will be a QA session at the end. We have two free offers for you today, email mess messaging evaluate, evaluation and custom web page evaluation. Stick around to the end of the webinar to find out how to qualify for these offers. Your presenters today are Chris Goward, CEO of Wider Funnel, and Hunter Boyle, Senior Business Development Manager at AWeber. Chris Goward was one of the first people to look at on online content and say we should test that. He is the brains behind the lift model and Kaizen method which has resulted in a conversion rate lift of 10% to 750% for every multi-test client. He is in demand as a speaker at, a com at conferences globally and is author of the book You Should Test That published by Wiley Cybex. Great, thanks Nancy. Great, thanks Nancy. And I had a little bit of uh, internet patchiness cutting out there. So if there if there are uh, internet connection issues, go ahead and just let us know in the in the chat session, and we'll make sure that we uh, have all of the content communicated today. So uh, as Nancy said, we have a new book out, just a couple weeks out now, and you can get a free chapter at you should test that dot com. So make sure you do that, um, and uh, you should buy that. <laughs> um, so I also have one slide to talk about Wider Funnel. Uh, some of you we may not have met, and we're you know very pleased to be co-presenting with AWeber a a Weber today, this webinar. And uh, so to give you uh, the perspective of how we're approaching conversion optimization, this is all we do at Wider Funnel. And I always get the question at the end, so I want to clarify that when we do conversion optimization, we do everything from developing a conversion strategy holistically looking at the website and all the landing page touch points, uh, as well as landing page optimization, which is a component of conversion optimization. We do the strategy, design, copywriting, testing, the full cycle. Uh, we specialize in advanced testing for complex businesses. So 10% to over 700% uh, for every retainer client and, and uh, across industries. So that's, that's all uh, I'll give you about us, and we'll get into really the, the content today um, and, and the processes that we're using to get results like this that you can use as well. But first, I want to also mention that I'm, I'm really uh, happy to be co-presenting with Hunter Boyle today. And uh, you know, I've bumped into Hunter a whole bunch of times on the conference circuit, and you know, uh, he, He works at optimizing content marketing for AWeber and for their clients, having incredible conversion rate and sales lift from email. Um, and he's great with uh, educating marketers on content and conversion rate optimization, helping them get ROI gains from, from their campaigns. So um, I'd like to, to bring on Hunter to talk about AWeber and, uh, and give a great uh, example of, of a conversion optimization test. Thanks, Chris, and thanks, Nancy. Just real fast, I uh, want to make sure you make sure that you can hear us okay how are we doing as far as audio I think the choppiness is behind us now I just want to confirm that all right great 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 fine good excellent all right terrific um, again thank you to Nancy for kicking us off and to Chris for joining us on this webinar when I was talking with Chris about trying to put together a conversion rate optimization webinar for email um, I was pretty excited because I've known about Wider Funnel and the work that Chris has done for several years. Some of you probably will as well, as he mentioned, you know, various conferences and the site and some other things that we had done. So it's great to be working with them. We've got a really strong presentation today. I'm going to jump into one test really quickly and then pretty much turn it over. But briefly, uh, as far as AWeber goes, some of you may already know, so I won't spend a lot of time on that. We are an email service provider with a lot of social, CRM, e-commerce, and other plugins. Our primary audience is small businesses, uh, bloggers, digital marketers, and we have a lot of sites that are customers that you might have known 
or might be reading quite regularly. You have over 120,000 plus customers worldwide, an award-winning blog with a lot more resources and case studies than we're going to be able to cover here. But I would urge you to check us out and find some more information for getting the most from your email, from your content marketing, and your conversion rate optimization. And what we're going to do today is jump right into a couple of um, a couple of tests and examples, and then we're going to go through a great process that Chris is going to lay out for the wider funnel method. So with that in mind, we'll just be taking uh, one or two pauses in between, and you know, just to kind of get your feedback, how we're doing on pacing, sound, stuff like that, the housekeeping items Nancy did at the top. So who wants to dive in with a test? I love this picture. This is this is from the U.S. Navy. They're diving in. Let's do it ourselves. Let's jump into a test that we ran here at AWeber not too long ago with our own newsletter opt-in page. So this just some brief background here. Uh, I think you're going to have some fun with this one. We've, we've had some fun in terms of looking at it ourselves. This is not uh, just a standard A-B test where we change the button color or something like that. This is multifactorial. And this was the page that we had dedicated to our own email newsletter sign up, right, for our blog. So we update our blog about three times a week. We send out, you know, the focused blog email with the articles from the blog to try and get people to make sure that they know what the latest topic was, bring it back to the site to read the entire piece, et cetera. It's a pretty familiar process, right? So this had been doing very well for us for quite a while, but it's it's fairly short, as you can see. The form is very direct. It has some benefits there. Learn how to acquire and retain more customers with easy to implement tips from our email marketing experts. A little bit wordy, sure, but uh, you know there's a nine-page PDF incentive that we use with that. Decent call to action with send me tips, not just subscribe or submit. You know, kind of the basics. Um, and then underneath, you see a couple uh, third-party credibility and what the blog is all about and another little sign-up link at the bottom, right? So, again, this was doing a pretty nice job for us for quite some time, but we felt like we could do a few things and see if we could do a little bit better, right? So if we look at what we did for a B version to test against that, you'll see on this new page we made a few significant changes. One, there's a little bit more context. There's more what's in it for me. You see the headline is now seven reasons to sign up for free email marketing tips, right? So it's a little bit different. The uh, sign up box itself is a little bit crisper, you know, become a better email marketing, uh, excuse me, become a better email marketer. It's more direct. There's that what's in it for me. You can look right down the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I won't read them all, but you can kind of see ideas and inspiration, free email templates, free email marketing guides and checklists, right? We really emphasize the value. Underneath those different key points are some of those credibility indicators from readers and customers, right? Getting ideas from future clients has been the best, visually inspiring and easy to follow. My newsletter signups have improved by 20% since you developed the WordPress plugin. We added a second form. Again, it's very short, it's very concise. We took out uh, the piece about the, the PDF in favor of the two free email guides and templates uh, points in the list above. Send me tips. We even added the privacy policy link. So, again, this wasn't a straightforward A-B test where we just changed the color of the button or the copy on the button. Multifactorial A-B test. We've seen uh, version A, version B. Now we've got both of them together. together. Excuse me. We have both of them side by side, so I just want to have Nancy open a quick poll, and I want to get your vote, and I want to find out, looking at these two, which one do you think performed the best, version A or version B? Unfortunately, with the poll, it does sort of obscure our view, but just take a quick moment to vote on these and tell us which one you think performed the best in terms of driving signups. Was it our control, the short copy version, or did the long copy version pull ahead? We've got a bunch of votes coming in. I'm just going to wait a little bit more. They're flowing. I don't, want to, I don't want to ruin the surprise and tell you which way they're flowing, but there are some interesting votes coming in. All right, so just real quickly use A and B. 
another couple seconds, we're going to shut the poll and then show the results. And I think you'll be kind of surprised. I just want to get a little bit more people for our, our, uh, our poll here. We have hundreds of people joining us today, so if we get a nice little number of votes, we can have a statistically significant result here. And who doesn't love votes? <laughs> All right, great. We are just about there, and let's close up. Let's see what you got. So between version A and version B, 62% felt that version B performed better. And I have to say you guys are right. You did a great job with um, that guess or that educated guess, that hypothesis. And now we'll go back. We'll see them side by side. Now briefly we'll just talk about a few reasons why B maybe did a little bit more. Because it's not just as simple as long copy, short copy, or you know this CTA, that one. We're just going to look at a few of the factors on B right after we see the actual result. You want to pop that up real fast? Really quickly, that's a pretty good game. I, I'm sorry I messed that up. I should have asked for people to guess the, uh, the opt-in lift that we got on that one. My fault. As you can see there, the version B got a 321% opt-in lift. That's about four times the amount that we were getting from the previous version, from version A, right? So put a couple of your thoughts into the Q&A and tell us why you think that is. Why, for you, do you think that B1? I've already got a couple of comments in there. Rena mentioned people don't have time for all that reading, at least not me. Well, that might have been a vote for A, so ironically that might have gone a different direction. Uh, I think our desire for info may skew toward B. That's a great comment from Carlos. You know, two opt-in boxes, multiple forms. That's true. We had two forms on the right-hand side, whereas on the second one, it was just a big text link down at the bottom. Right? People want to read the tips immediately. What's in it for me and the bullets? Kamal, I hope I pronounced that right. Absolutely. Great point. Let's roll over to the next slide and just look at a few real highlights and takeaways that we um, picked out from our test here. On the left, you can see the actual results from Visual Website Optimizer. Right? You can see it was actually a little above 321%. These were results that came in, I think, right after we finished the first week of testing. So over time, that has played itself out. And Chris is going to talk a little bit about uh, timing and length of testing, which is going to be really important. You're going to definitely want to hear that. But for this one right off the bat, we knew that we were on to a winner. We had a whole lot of changes. You can see you know, uh, the clarity on the top main headline, seven reasons, right, on, right into the point. Or near the top, we looked at the way some of the testimonials improved that. So without getting too detailed into the various nuts and bolts, because I don't want to just present this as a test where you know, if you do A, B, and C, you'll get 321% more subtract, right? That's not really the point of what we're talking about here. What it is that we're talking about is a couple of factors. So briefly, the B version did a few things that are really important to kind of to think about, right? When, when you're doing your own tests and you're doing your own sign-up forms and other copy uh, kinds of tests and experiments, first was the clear and direct approach with the benefits, the real, I mean, you know, uh, the what's in it for me, I can't emphasize that enough. You guys know that. The way that it gets laid out can be bullet points. It might not be bullet points, however you do it. Uh, formatting, again, is secondary to the fact that making those benefits really clear is the key. Building a stronger case for that value and using these different seven reasons to support that overall value, I mean, that really emphasized not just what you're going to get, but it really made it very clear why you're going to want to sign up for this email. In the first version, it was again, it was pretty good. It did okay. We had a PDF to try and incentivize signups, but you remember that long headline that I read over the box the first time? Improve your list. I don't even remember all the words. This one is very direct. Become a better email marketer. Right? Seven reasons to sign up for free email marketing tips. And then finally. We put the options in the right place, right? There's the form up top. It, it links directly to the benefits. 
and then for people who scroll all the way to the bottom, we capture their attention too. So we use proximity in a very important way to kind of build the value, build the what's in it for me case, make it very clear this is not just another email that you might get this or that. This is really going to help drive your results and people respond in a great, great way. We have the full case study on our blog. There's a quick link to it. There's a bit.ly bit.ly slash 321 opt-ins which goes into a little bit more detail and again we'll be covering some of these as far as any Q&A that you guys have we can pick that up at the end but I thought this was a great test to help us kick this off so thank you for putting the thoughts into the Q&A as well there's some really good questions there that we might tackle here towards the end but with that in mind right now I'm going to give the mic over to Chris and he's going to pick it up and look at another quick couple of things to talk about with testing. That's great. Thanks, Hunter. Very yeah. good example. And uh, I think what they also did well, if whoever does well in their marketing, is really understanding the target audience and getting the tone right and, uh, and, and the offers that appeal to them. Uh, that's a great example of uh, what we call a variable cluster test, where there are multiple things changed. I mean, this is a, a dramatically different approach to the page where you're testing a whole bunch of things in once to really hit one of those swing for the fences uh, improvements that they clearly hit on this one. So what I'm going to show you now are, uh, is the other side of the conversion optimization strategy where we combine those approaches with some isolations to generate individual marketing insights. You know, there's a whole bunch of ideas in this page, but which ones actually made the biggest impact? And that's where you can do follow-up tests isolate individual elements and find out what works. So I'm going to show an example here of a test we ran for Tourism British Columbia where at, now this is the official tourism organization of British Columbia. They have thousands of, of subscribers. They've got a very sophisticated marketing campaign with um, predictive analytics to you know determine who to send marketing messages to um, and what they needed to get was an increase in their email uh, subscriber base from all of their marketing activities and all of their touch points. So this is an example of, of a landing page where uh, visitors were, were landing on to request a free guide for link to BC. And we were ta uh, tasked to look at how do we get more people to subscribe when they're requesting our guides or requesting our marketing offers. How do we get people to subscribe and opt in so that we can continue to, to market to them, right? Build that valuable database, which can be the most valuable part of their, of their marketing campaigns. So we focused on this one area. It was the permission for future contact, and it had three checkboxes in there. So what we did is ran through the process of developing hypotheses to test and find out what really works. And I'm going to show you how to use these uh, frameworks and methods in just a moment. But first, I'm going to look at the variation we tested in this, in this case as an example. <clears throat> so variation A says, permission for future contact. Tourism British Columbia may wish to contact you in the future. Do we have permission to do so? Uh, and, and then there's another checkbox. Would you be interested in receiving travel information from other Canadian tourism organizations? And then sign up for a quarterly e-newsletter with seasonal information about great places to go and fun things to do. And that's really what they wanted people to check off. So variation B was rewritten. It said, hi, I would like to in British Columbia to contact me in the future and notify me when new versions of the travel guides are published. And there was a, a link to uh, see a preview. And it was a little pop-up light box that showed one of the recent newsletters. And then it said, yes, I would like to receive the quarterly e-newsletter. So that was bolded. and they can click on that one. And then the third option, would you be interested in receiving travel information from other Canadian tourism organizations? And then C was exactly the same, but we removed that third checkbox for their partner organizations. So now, of course, you know, the question is always when you are sitting in your, your, your boardroom and your digital agency has come up with their new designs for your landing page, some of these little components, small, insignificant details can make a huge difference in your marketing. But how do you know which ones should go live, right? And, and there are different methods that certain organizations use to choose which things should go live on their website. Um, and what I'm going to talk about is these various methods where you know, you're looking, perhaps you're sitting on the boardroom table, your agency is presenting your different landing page designs, and they're saying, OK, which one would you like to go live? Uh, there's three ways, in general, that companies make that decision. 
And you've probably heard of the first way, the HIPPO method. And maybe in your organization, they, they use that. It's the highest paid person's opinion, right? And, and uh, that's the person who points at the, the landing page that they like best, and that's what go live, goes live. Uh, or I like to also talk about the black turtleneck method that are happening in a lot of organizations where the person wearing the sunglasses and black turtleneck, they have the opinions, and they point at the one they like, and that's what goes live. Um, but of course, being smart marketers, you'll use the scientific method, right, where we'll uh, redirect visitors and randomly show different variations. And this is, of course, the key to conversion optimization. Um, so we test the three different versions and track to see which actually get more opt-ins as a percentage of uh, Okay. Uh, now, in this case, we're only tracking subscribe options, but of course, you can also track phone calls or purchases or lead gen or whatever it is um, that uh, is important to the business. So, the question is, which one won? So, we're going to open up a poll, and remember that, go ahead and launch that poll. You can vote for A, B, or C. Now, A had the three options with shorter copy and no preview. Variation B had... Uh, the three options with the newsletter preview pop-up, and variation C had two options with the newsletter preview pop-up. So go ahead and put your vote in. Just choose A, B, or C. A had shorter copy, no preview. B had the rewritten copy with the preview. C had two options in the preview. All right, we've got most of the votes coming in. Don't be shy. We will not be calling you out and shaming you if you vote wrong. <laughs> So A was shorter options with the preview, C was two options with the preview. Okay, so let's close that down and take a look at what you voted. Let's look at the results. Wow, <clears throat> there's a big win for C. So uh, clearly if we'd been sitting around the boardroom table and some of you were hippos in the room, we'd be, we'd be showing C right now. <laughs> um, but uh, let's take a look at what actually happened. All right, so when we look at the results, Turns out that B won. So B actually had the highest conversion rate. And of course, what's interesting about that is that that was the one that had three options to subscribe to. It turns out that removing that, that last option didn't increase, didn't maximize the conversion rate. Now, you may be thinking, well, that's, that's strange. Isn't the best practice that reducing choice, reducing options should improve conversions? Isn't, isn't there too much clutter and distraction? And, and are there problems with this? Well, you know, and, and the, the punchline is, of course, that that's why we test, to find out what actually works in your particular situation. Um, and, and there's uh, uh, an issue here with framing. Well, it looks like this is um, whether or not people were actually subscribing to get information from other organizations. Having that in the center, that bolded uh, option, uh, worked better for some reason, than having the, three, the, the two options and, and reducing them. Uh, maybe it gave a contrast. So we can continue to test and find out exactly why that worked. But um, what's interesting also is we found that uh, in further testing, this preview was one of the biggest drivers for the conversion rate lift. Now, think about getting 12% more opt-ins from this tiny little area of your website and how much value would that add to your database. So that's something you can test and improve on, uh, on your opt-in forms now. So I want to step up some of the problems that are happening in these conversion optimization and then talk about how to do it right. So there's a problem right now in internet marketing where conversion optimization is being undervalued. Most marketers still aren't testing. And you have thousands of beautiful visitors coming to your website every day just waiting to tell you what works to drive leads and sales. How many tests do you have running on your website right now? Do you constantly have learning being generated from all of those visitors? If you're not testing, you're missing the potential. And you know, this being a marketing uh, uh, webinar, we've, we've uh, got to have a cat in here at some point, right? So there it is. All right, so I want to correct some misconceptions about conversion optimization and some of the problem areas that I see happening. Uh, and then we'll talk about how to do it right. So first of all, there's a myth that best practices 
give the best results in conversion optimization. But you know, there's a lot of people giving advice out there that's based on, on perhaps uh, best practices, perhaps common sense, uh, perhaps their gut feeling that have never been tested or certainly have not been tested in your particular situation. And I, I can give you an example of this where the, I can point you to a, a blog post that says you should always use green buttons because green buttons work best. I can point you to another blog post that says red beats green because they've tested it, right? And red always works. I can point you to another one actually that says you should always use orange buttons because orange are action colors. Well, these are opinions. And maybe if they're tested in one particular situation, one might work better than others. But that is irrelevant in your particular situation because this consulting and this uh, best practices advice ignores context. And context is key in conversions. The truth is that there are an infinite variety of buttons that will work in particular situations. This is just a sample of some of the buttons that at Wider Funnel we've seen work best. Um, and you know, of course you'll see that the variety is much more important than any particular best practice. In fact, look at this button down at the bottom, this pink one. Now, you can't see the animation. This one was actually a flash button that had sparklers and streamers and, and, and arrows and all kinds of different colors on it. And in fact, I would probably never even recommend testing it on most of your websites because <laughs> that would probably harm your brand. Um, but in this context, the target audience was 13-year-old girls. And that button performed fantastic. Uh, and it, it was the best performer. And in fact, they had a triple digit conversion rate left from multivariate tests we were running. So context is important. Uh, so that's, that's one, one issue with uh, some of the, the conversion optimization you know, uh, uh, advice that's going on out there. Another one is about tools. Now, there's a lot of talk about multivariate testing and, uh, and how, and, and today we're talking about big data. A lot of people are, are, are you know, distracted with the technology and the false promise that you can put any weak ideas into a tool and come out with brilliant results. And that's just not the case with multivariate and often not the case with big data technology. People are just still trying to figure out how all these algorithms can solve our problems, but they're not paying off. Um, and a lot of times with some tool vendors, they'll try and sell you on technology that's not needed or doesn't give you great results because that's how they justify the fees. Now, we love technology vendors and we use a, a lot of great te technology. But what you have to understand is that you can't just rely on the tools without having the strategy. Strategy is critical. And uh, as Avinash says, you should spend 10% on tools and 90% on people. And he, he's such a rock star, I don't even have to use his, his last name. Everyone knows Avinash. Um, and that's good advice, right? Rely on the tools with the support of great strategy. Okay, so there's another misunderstanding that I want to talk about briefly. Um, you know, often when we're presenting at conferences, people come up and say, hey, yeah, you know, we love testing. We're doing a lot of testing. And I, you know, when I get into how are they structuring their tasks, how are they doing that? Some industries, but doesn't work online. And that's where uh, it's a pre and post test, where they have an old page and swap into a new page. Now, in this case, clearly you can see in the analytics that wow, that trend is great, right? That new page clearly is outperforming the old one, right? <laughs> Until you take into account the effects of seasonality, the effects of competitive offers, the effects of stock levels, the effects of all of the other influencers that are changing the results of a test and you can't detect with a pre and post test or a before and after test. So it's in, it's, uh, vital that to get results you use controlled testing where visitors are randomly redirected in a controlled method and there's always a control group maintained so that you can actually get statistically significant results and know for a fact what's actually working better in a controlled way. That's how the scientific method works. Okay, There's another myth that I want to talk about. This is the last one uh, where a lot of people are thinking that when they talk about testing, that they're actually talking about usability testing. The small groups are you know, getting qualitative feedback from, from people. Um, there are a lot of well-known uh, reasons that usability testing alone leads to misleading results. 
The Hawthorne effect is one where people uh, in, in artificial environments are uh, motivated differently than they are, be, than they are in their natural environments. There's the selection bias. There's the observer uh, effect. There are all kinds of effects that make it only valuable for generating hypotheses and not for taking conclusions and making changes on your most important marketing assets. Okay? So don't just rely on usability testing to tell you what kinds of problems and, and myths in conversion optimization um, that I hope are helpful negative. So what I want to do now is flip it around and say what conversion optimization? How do we actually get results? And real conversion optimization is the intersection of three things. One is persuasion marketing, where the marketer understands how to create motivation in your prospects, how to present your value proposition in a way that makes them want to act. And the second component is experience design, where once they have that motivation, how do you facilitate how do you make it easy to transact? How do you make a, a funnel that people just go through with ease and love the experience? And then third is the scientific method where we test the hypotheses within those other two areas. That's where conversion optimization sits, and that's where we get the best results. And you know what we find is that a lot of people that come from different backgrounds only focus on one little area. You know, if they come from marketing, maybe they think conversion is all about persuasion. It's all about how do you use tricks and to motivate people and 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 uh, you know try and give people that that desire? Um, and then other people that come from usability may think that it's just about checking off the usability boxes and you know that will increase your conversion rate. But you really need to think holistically to find all of the opportunities for improving your your conversion rate and creating powerful hypotheses. Okay, so that's where conversion optimization sits. But now you know I want to get into how do you actually get Results. How does the rubber hit the road here, um, and how you improve uh, dramatically in your conversion effectiveness? It's all about one thing: creating powerful hypotheses. And I've already talked about this a little bit, but what I'm going to show you now is a framework that you can use to create powerful hypotheses that actually get results consistently. You know, a lot of times when you're out there uh, reading blog posts, trying to to find out what to change or even what to test on your website. Um, you'll run out of those ideas fairly quickly because you know it's all the same advice being thrown around. But how do you create an unending stream of ideas for what will actually improve your business? So I'm going to show you a framework that you can use. And before I get into that, I want to show you one slide that to you know eliminate any questions about will this work in my business. These are just some of the companies that Wider Funnel is working with to improve conversions. And, and the reason I'm showing you this is that these frameworks work in all industries, whether you're in B2B, B2C, e-commerce, lead gen, subscription, affiliate, you know, if you're focused on email marketing, we've tested it. And I'm going to show you now the framework that we use in all of these cases to improve their conversion rate. Um, one of the frameworks we use that's critical and core to our developing hypotheses is the lift model. And uh, I'll show you how the lift model works. <clears throat> you may have seen it before. It's getting popular in conversion optimization circles. And essentially, this is, these are the six categories of conversion rate opportunities. The first one is your value proposition. And your value proposition is really the core of your potential conversion rate lift. There are a lot of different definitions for value proposition, and you probably have one of your own. The way I think about it is an equation that goes on in your prospect's mind between the perceived benefits of taking action and the perceived costs of taking action. And if that perceived benefit outweighs the perceived costs, they'll have positive motivation, and they'll be your your value proposition is working for them, and they'll want to take action. If it's negative, they'll bounce right away. Okay, or you can make your value proposition. We can actually test with that through things like graphic design, credibility indicators, uh, support points. That will increase your value proposition, the perceived perceived side of the value proposition. Of course, you can also test product augmentation and pricing and sales and all those things that can help as well. Now, once you've got the value proposition, all of the other factors really support or detract from it. So then we look at the relevance of the presentation, the relevance of the page to what the visitor needs, the relevance to the source media, that page that they just clicked from, or the email. How relevant is your landing page to the email that you're sending out to their visitors? I'll show you an example of that in just a few minutes. Then we look at the clarity of the presentation. 
Uh, that's the clarity of the eye flow, clarity of the imagery and the copywriting and the call to action, right? Then we look at factors that reduce conversion rates. The anxiety is anything that creates uncertainty in the prospect's mind about taking that action in that particular uh, page. And then distraction is anything that redirects their attention from the primary message or the primary call to action. Then we look at urgency. Why should I act now? Right? You can test urgency, of course, with offers and limited time, but also the tone of the presentation can impact urgency, that perceived uh, reason to, to act now and excitement. Okay, so then we take these six factors and look from the perspective of the visitor, from, the, from sitting in their seat, wearing their shoes, your website. So here's an example um, for WineExpress.com, and this is one of the companies within the wine enthusiast group. They have uh, an email list of millions of, of opt-in emails. Their landing page has been highly optimized. Right? They've done a lot of testing and tuning, but they've hit a plateau and they just couldn't seem to boost it anymore. They needed to get more sales from this, this email list. So they came to us and said, you know, uh, right phone, we need some help with this. We need to improve this conversion rate. We need to get from this landing page. And so what we did is to start, after of course discovery, to do a lift analysis for this particular page. Now this is what they came with. Okay, so this was for their wine of the day, and it's a special daily selection from their email reserves uh, where you get 99 cents shipping for the wine of the day, which is a great deal. You also get a special price on this wine. So take a look at this this email, uh, this landing page, and think for a moment about how you would improve this. And uh, maybe we can open up the questions panel, and you can put some of your ideas in there about how would you improve this landing page from an email campaign? What are the problems that people might be facing? Why would they not be buying on this landing page? So we've got clutter is an issue. Um, make the shipping free, not 99 cents. Simplify and reduce the options. That's a good point, Carlos. Make the message easier to read. All right, they need to scroll to see the video, right? Lots of distracting things on the page. The bold highlights could be a stronger call to action. There's too many words, too many calls to action. All right, so we're seeing that, that clutter issue. Adding an old price above the R price, right? What's the benefit? Why should I believe that this is a sale price. Thoughts, and, and so what we would do is take those ideas and categorize them into lift points to make sure that we've really thought about all of the different aspects that could be improving conversion rates here. So let's take a look at what we came up with. And here, these are the top priority ones. Of course, we often come up, you know, when we do our, our uh, brainstorming with our strategists, we'll come up with dozens of, of, uh, of of problems, but these are some of the ones that may be common that you might find in your environment as well. Uh, first is distraction. There's too much space taken up at the top of the page with, with headers, navigation, uh, logos, more navigation, more navigation before actually getting into the offer. And there was a comment there about how you know some of the content is is lower on the page, and that's true. There's distraction here that the shipping deal gets lost in the busy header, right? There's busyness on the page, graphical and text busyness. Uh, the item number in the call to action area is given high prominence. I mean, is that important for prospects? Probably not. There's customer ratings um, that are below the fold, and there's no link to reviews above the fold. That may be important for choosing a line. Small A videos below the fold. Less relevant to email traffic. Right? Are they here for the wine of the day offer or uh, not as relevant? The product description is actually far below the fold. That's a clarity issue. The label image is non-clickable, so you can't. Is maybe the label is important? Maybe not. But um, but anytime there's there's a clarity issue, it can create uh, uh, mental dissonance. The typeface is small within the pricing and product section. There's little urgency. Now this is, in particular, a time-sensitive offer. They've got 24 hours to take advantage of this offer. So how can we make that prominent? 
Okay, so then what we do is we take these lift points, and these are problems, and then flip them into strengths. And that creates hypotheses. So, for example, if we said, well, if, if the problem was that um, the product description is below the fold, a uh, hypothesis is that moving the product description above the fold will lift e-commerce sales. And now that's something we can test right, in a layout. So now the art of the strategist comes in to say, well, we've got all of these lift points, we've got all these problems, and we've got all these hypotheses. What are we actually going to test? And we've got to use a little bit of that art to understand when to create variable cluster tests with many different uh, variations and when to isolate to generate marketing insights. And you know, we've seen a couple examples already where uh, Hunter was looking at a variable cluster example where you know, you're clustering all these things together to really try and get a big lift. Or the tourism BC example where we're isolating a few things, a few small elements to understand and get insights into why people are doing different things and what are the individual elements that are creating action. So let's take a look at what we did. Insights and thoughts about what you can do as well. So here are two of the redesigned pages. Now what you'll see, this is after a series of tests where this is already quite different than the original control, but we tested this against that original control. And here are two isolations where we're focusing on the call to action area. The first one says our price and the discounted case price, the availability and the add to cart button. Variation B has a big on sale now. The our price or the sale price is, uh, is, is larger in red and the larger add to cart button. So the question is, which one won, right? So let's open up the poll and see what you think, and then we'll take a look at what their smaller price and smaller call to action, or was it B with the big on sale now added and the larger add to cart? So which one won? Go ahead and vote. Let's see uh, your votes coming in there. Well, that's good, interesting. We've got uh, some disagreement happening in the crowd. That's good. So what was it? Our price A with the smaller add to cart or the larger on sale now and large button, variation B. Okay, so let's take a look at what you voted. Let's close down that poll. We'll look at the poll results and wow, that is a dramatic conclusive result and you know clearly you folks have been have been reading a lot of blog posts about conversion optimization that's good let's take a look at what happened well when we look at the scientifically tested results oh it turns out that a1 uh, that is a shock but what's why is it happening I mean if you've read the blog posts you should know that a big on sale now and a large add to cart button would work right that's going to win every time. Well, unfortunately, A1 with a 5% conversion rate lift. Now, you may also be saying, well, 5%, I mean, what, you know, that's nothing. What's, what's 5%? Well, to their company, 5% could be significant. But more than that, we also found, as, as always with e-commerce, we were tracking revenue. And it turns out that this actually also created a 41% increase in revenue per visitor. What was happening is that people were buying more cases from this variation, 41% more. So that was a big, uh, a, a big insight for them um, through this isolation. Now I'm going to show you another variation, and this was against a similar template. Where in this case, this was isolating an urgency factor. Variation A, what we had was order in the next hours, minutes, and seconds to get 99 cent shipping. And this was a countdown timer. So they'd be sitting on the landing page and this countdown would be counting down saying you've only got three hours and 43 minutes and then it would count down to the next minute. Variation B did not have that element on there. Everything else was the same. So again, this is an isolation to add urgency. Which one won? Let's open up a poll. Which one do you think won? Was it A with the urgency countdown? Was it B with nothing in the header, just a blank spot? Okay, so A with urgency or B without? Chris, go ahead and get your votes in there. Yeah, I just want to mention that um, I, I hope everybody is is okay with voting on this one after the last time you sort of pulled the fast one on everybody. And now <laughs> someone actually, uh, Lee, put in the comments, uh, I give up. So don't give up. <laughs> don't give up. Use your conscience. A or B. It's all you know. It's all good. 
that we don't get we're all, along. We're all friends here. That's right. And you know what? It's for a good cause because in just a moment we're going to have a big learning conclusion that's going to that's going to knock your socks off. Definitely. All right. So. All right. So let's go ahead and take a look at that poll. What actually happened? Okay. So we've got. Ah, yes. You're starting to feel a little tentative here. We've got a 60-40 split here between A and B. So, so that's good. Let's look at what actually happened. And. Uh, Turns out, of course, that B won, or I probably wouldn't be showing you this example because it would be too obvious, right? <laughs> um, and that was an even bigger lift than the original. So why did this happen? And, and here's where uh, we're, we're leading to, is that there's actually a very important marketing insight that we generated from a series of tests in this organization. And what we found is that for this target audience, this was a highly sophisticated wine connoisseur audience high average order value, high income, and what they were looking for was information about their wine. Anything that smelled like marketing turned them off. And in fact, through a series of tests, as, as one of you actually mentioned in the, com in the comments section earlier, that sommelier video was below the fold. And it turns out that the closer we moved that video to the call to action, the closer we tied it visually with that, and the higher we made it on the page above the fold, the higher their sales went. And in their, in their particular situation, that video was the key to getting conversion rate. It's not in every situation. And I'll tell you that right now because I've also heard a lot of people saying, you know, video on landing pages is what it's all about. And we've tested that too and found that in a lot of situations, um, for example, we, in a B2B lead gen situation where they had a demo video on their landing page, it actually reduced their sales or their, their lead gen. And uh, a static uh, screenshot that just showed the product interface actually worked better than a video because the video was too distracting. So don't, again, as, as, a, as a best practice, you can always apply because it depends on the situation. In this case, the video worked uh, amazingly well to increase their sales. So this is, this is how to uh, generate marketing insights using the Lyft framework and how to aim for those insights and, and really try and dig for the why behind the test results. And, and what you can do to actually get robust marketing insights is to say, as we did with Wine Express, to say, you know, why would people respond in that way? It's contrary to what we might have thought was the best practices. Can we further test that and say, well, maybe that marketing is, is putting them off and try testing something else that, that pushes that envelope. And if you see some similarities and some, some uh, reinforced results, that's really how scientific marketing works, works and where we actually start to develop theories about what works in your organization. Okay, so I hope that's been helpful. We've got some frameworks under our belt. Um, I'm gonna, I have one more question for you, and that is, what are you waiting for? All right, so you've got an opportunity, you've got a framework, you've got some, uh, some traffic coming to your site. Let's go ahead and get testing. And uh, we've got some, um, a few minutes here for questions as well, but before we get to that, I also want to um, deliver what we promised with the special offers. So. Hunter, maybe you want to uh, mention this, this offer that you have uh, for the email message evaluation. I do. Thanks, Chris. But real quickly, even before I mention that, I wanted to say thank you. And honestly, the way that you tied that together at the end, I think was perfect. I think if there's one big takeaway that everyone here today should be leaving with, it's what you said about context being so important to testing, more so than best practices, more so than you know, we talked about the way that button colors or, you know, a certain piece of copy, you know, has this effect or might not have this effect. We looked at very complex tests that took a bunch of factors into account. And we looked at factors that were isolated down. But the underlying current in all of these tests that we've looked at here today is that rather than just going for a game the things that we got out of these were insights, right, about the audience. And because of their reactions and their responses, we learned a little bit more than just this form here or this piece of copy here or this color here is what drove the result. Ultimately, a lot of what we see in terms of these conversion gains really does come back to the context and it comes back to the mindset of the people that we're trying to reach, whether those are prospects, whether those are customers, whatever stage of the relationship we're at with them, if they're already 
in our email list or we're trying to get them there or you know they purchased and they're customers and we're trying to get them to buy more and keep that relationship going long term think about the insights and think about the mindset not just the numbers not just the nuts and bolts and that should really be key for guiding your testing that and some raw cats I think are really the, the two takeaways <laughs> so um, as Chris mentioned we did put together a couple special offers to say thank you for everyone who joined us here today uh, this is not a sale offer in, in any respect you guys many of you probably know Aweber already so what we're trying to do here with this webinar is something a little bit new we want to try and offer some email messaging evaluations for people who joined us here on the live call today so myself and a couple of our team members who work in optimization here at Aweber with me are going to try and evaluate up to 10 different email uh, uh, Our attendees so here's how that's going to work and again this is kind of new for us so bear with us you know, we're trying to give some really good value to you guys and help you put some things to practice um, it's going to be a first come first serve so the way that you, you try and get onto the list here is to send an email to hunter B at aweber.com that'll go directly to me please use the subject CRO in all caps as you can imagine, we all get a ton of email these days and working for an email service provider. I am not alone in that. So trying to sift through these will be uh, a challenging thing, but we're going to try and do it. We really want to help you guys out. So send that email to me with the subject CRO. Send along either a link to the email, you know, a URL for the web view version, or forward it and include just a brief overview, right? As Chris mentioned, context is so important. We'll probably end up trying to follow up with you a little bit more to kind of, you know, get some more details beyond just the email itself. And we ask that you have a minimum of 10,000 active subscribers on your list. Obviously, we would love to try and do evaluations for everybody on the call today, but we have to try and keep people for a start. So we really want to focus on those who have lists that can take these ideas, take some advice, and really roll out a, st a statistically significant test. So having an audience of that size is pretty important. If you email us with some of those details, we will try and sift through everyone that we get and get back to you by Friday and let you know if it is something that we can move ahead with. And if not, please don't worry. If your list is not uh, at the 10,000 level, we are looking into some other webinars and some follow-up stuff for smaller list sizes and things like that. Actually, it's one of the topics we're looking ahead to. So don't fret. There will be other opportunities, but please, if you got a lot out of our session today, if you really want to have us take a look over your email and messaging and kind of evaluate some of your uh, uh, emails for these concepts, follow this, send it in to us, send us a note with some background, and we will see what we can do in terms of giving you some feedback and some ideas that can help you with your own conversion testing and things to try and improve your own email and get some real gains. And we have a very Great. special offer as well from our co-host and special guest today, Chris from Lighter Funnel. Tell them what you got, Chris. Yeah, thanks, Hunter. And <clears throat> um, I want to uh, thank you also for, uh, for, for putting this together with us. Uh, it's been a lot of fun, and, and Hunter really goes above and beyond to add value for it uh, with that, that 31 tips um, PDF that we put together for you guys uh, before you, that you hopefully got when you um, when you signed up. If you haven't, feel, go ahead and send us an email. We'll make sure you, that you get that as well. Uh, but it's been been great working with Hunter. He's a really uh, uh, organized guy and, and knows his stuff. So um, and and we've also put together an offer for you that that will be helpful for you. Um, and again, we we've also been able to get 10 time slots at wider funnel to give you a conversion page evaluation. So whether that's on a landing page for your email or whether that's on a page to increase your subscriptions or whether that's on your home page or, or an important business page, you can get uh, a free evaluation that will help you to find out what to test and how to improve and how to get your conversion rate lifted. So you know, similarly, um, we, we've had to put this on a first come first serve basis as well. We've got those 10 time slots, 
And if you email hello at widerfunnel.com, then we'll make sure that we uh, get back to you right away. Uh, Nancy will respond to you and make sure we get you into the slot. <clears throat> so make sure to include the URL of the page you'd like to evaluate it. And if you've got a minimum 30,000 unique visitors on your website, uh, then we can help you with that and get you in, in, in that, uh, that offer. Um, and uh, it's for any industry, so feel free to, to go ahead with that. Now, we also have, uh, two minutes left here for a couple questions. And I'll make sure that we get both of those offers up there as well. Um, now, I also wanted to mention that you know I, when we're at, going through those those polls and examples, I hope you have fun with that and learn something. Um, and you know when we do the polls or when we do our own tests internally here at Wider Funnel, we always have a uh, an informal vote where we all vote on which one we think won. And you know invariably half of us are wrong and half of us get it right. And, and um, so we give a Starbucks card to whoever <laughs> gets it right. But you know so don't feel bad if you didn't get them right uh, because uh, you know even it, it, everyone gets them wrong once in a while. <laughs> okay, so um, we have a whole bunch of people asking questions here. Um, a question from Tony, why was the, I think this is talking about the uh, Wine Express example, why was the offer on the blind side, the right, when most heat maps show that the left is where the visitor first looks? And that's a good question, um, Tony, and, and that's something that we can certainly test. And in fact, I think I'm pretty sure that one of the earlier variations we did test that um, in that in that example. Uh, but in some cases, you're right that, that the call to action on the right side has worked better for us. Or sorry, on the left side has worked better for us in some cases. Um, I think of the example uh, for babyage.com. It's one of the case studies on our website, where in fact moving that call to action in their product page template from the right to the left and just doing a simple column swap actually increased their sales by 16%. So yeah, that's something that's valid and worthwhile testing. But um, in this case, they were the iFlow worked where they were wanted to land on the wine, get the information about it before getting to the call to action, and it wasn't as price sensitive of an audience. So perhaps that's why the right column uh, call to action worked better in this case. You know, that's that's a hypothesis. So yeah, good question there. Hey, Chris, right. one uh, quick thing I want to interject while we take a few more questions since we're getting close to the 2 o'clock mark. If anybody ha has to go, we understand, as we mentioned at the top of housekeeping, there will be a video replay of this. Uh, the ebook, the 31 tips that Chris mentioned, um, you'll get a chance to find that as well. I know some of you, uh, if you missed it on the thank you confirmation page from signing up, um, we will post that back, I think, later with the video. Um, and in the meantime, if you do have to log out, if you have to bounce, we would ask that you please fill out a very quick survey that pops up on logout and go to webinar. We really appreciate your feedback and we use that to create our new sessions to find out what other topics you'd like us to cover, what other angles. I have questions maybe. Um, it should pop up when you log out of good webinar if you have to leave it too and have a hard stop. Um, so thank you very much for joining us and for that feedback. And then we'll just take a couple more questions as they come in. And uh, again, if you have to go, please look for us and some upcoming webinars in the near future with some of that feedback rolled in. And let's just take a couple more questions from you guys. Yeah, and if you do have questions that we don't get to, um, you know, you can go ahead and email us as well, and we'll be happy to, uh, to do that in person and, and uh, hopefully get a blog post up with some of the answers to the common ones. Um, Chris, there's a question, question here. I, yep. I saw on the list there from Marina that uh, yep. I thought would be kind of an interesting one if you're looking at that. The first test example is DDD. Should we test this or is it better to test one variable at a time? I'd love to have you tackle that one directly. Get your thoughts there. Sure, yeah. Um, and that, yeah, that's a really good question. And, they, you know, as I, and I mentioned, that's really part of the art of the conversion strategies. When you're coming up with the strategy for what to test, is is looking at all of the hypotheses you have and, and trying to prioritize which ones are going to generate insights that will be most useful learnings for you going forward. And the rest of them you should all cluster together because if they're not important, you don't think they're going to have a big individual impact, cluster them, get a big win, and then isolate those variables that you really want to learn about. 
uh, and that will be the most efficient way to use your traffic. Now, if you've got a low traffic site, you're going to want to cluster a lot more things together and use fewer variations so you can get faster wins rather than having, you know, for example, a multivariate test where you've got dozens of different variations going out there that could take months to, to get a result. And that's just a waste of your traffic. You know, your limiting factor is that, is that traffic that's coming to your website. So, um, so you know, it's, it's a difficult sometimes decision to make. We often arm wrestle with this in our, in our boardroom here and creating the test plans. Should we cluster this in or should we isolate that one? You, you know, we can only really test five or six different variations here to get a result quickly. So, um, so the takeaway there, though, is to prioritize for insights. What will drive a marketing insight or a usability insight that will help you leverage and learn something um, about things that you can improve on the rest of your site as well. Exactly. And I think you nailed it again when you were talking about traffic being, uh, uh, you know, a very key factor because I know we've had a few people show some of their comments in the Q&A about uh, the low, you know, amounts of traffic and how to kind of deal with testing in those environments. And I think your advice was spot on. For people who are trying to test without a heavy flow of traffic, using that cluster methodology, using those insights, trying to get a, a bigger combined win than a bunch of tiny incremental ones. And you could spend two years on testing the one uh, button color test and get 5% here or 3 or 10 or you know whatever. Um, but if you're really looking to kind of make a large gain and learn some things from that at the same time, that approach that we looked at a couple of times is really helpful for doing that, particularly for those types of traffic environments and in that context. Great question, Marine. Chris, that, uh, that was a great answer as well. Yep, Real good one. And, and we're, yep, we're often starting with, uh, with the cluster tests and then going for isolations after that. Even, even for a high traffic site, um, it's just, uh, you know, let's see if we can get a higher, higher watermark to start from. Right. And we have, we have a pretty significant amount of traffic that comes to the page that we use uh, for the test that you're referring to. But at the same time, you know, we really felt that that one page had been in place, you know, the control had been in place for a while. There were a lot of test ideas that we had. There were a lot of things that had sort of built up over the months that we wanted to kind of test. And rather than stretching them out into a series of 12 or 13 and doing them a week at a time, um, you know, we took that, we combined, put the test together that you saw, and look at the result. We were, we were really happy with it. So that's, yeah. <laughs> That's our new control, so it can really work when you, uh, when you have the context. Um, real quickly, just because we're now a little past two, I know some people are, are uh, filtering off and we have to kind of go. Follow us on Twitter. You can see Chris Gower, Hunter Boyle, uh, and then you know A. Weber and Wider Funnel as well. Please keep in touch with us. Let us know your feedback from this webinar, either from the Good Webinar Survey and or get in touch with us on Twitter and whatnot. Um, take advantage of those offers that we put out there today. We're looking forward to seeing some emails from you guys and trying to help you a little bit more going forward. And again, I, I want to, before we sign off, I want to say thank you so much to everyone who joined us today. We really appreciate you coming on the call. I want to say thank you especially to Chris, our co-presenter, and Nancy, who did a wonderful job putting a lot of great information together, the 31 Tips PDF, a lot of value here. And, I, you know, I can't thank you guys enough for doing this. I really am glad that this came together, and I hope that everybody here found it as valuable and as enjoyable as I did putting it together and talking with you guys. Yeah, it was great. Thanks, Hunter, and thanks to you all for attending, and we'll hope to see you again online. Thanks, folks.